I'm James Hamilton from Stumping Up's Woodworking Journal, and when I was a new woodworker, I was confused about table saw blades. I thought a blade was a blade, and whatever came on my saw was good enough. Then, after talking to other woodworkers, I started to believe that it was the brand of the blade that mattered. You just needed one that was expensive enough. It wasn't until much later that I learned that there are different types of blades, with different teeth, ground to different shapes, and set at different angles. And matching the right blade type to the job was as important as choosing one of the right quality. In this video, we're going to concentrate on tooth geometry. Why is one tooth shaped like this and another one like that? What do all the terms you see on the packages mean? How many teeth should a blade have, and what the heck is a hook angle? Even if you're a seasoned woodworker, I think you'll find this little tutorial very interesting. Let's begin with those confusing abbreviations you see on the packages. FTG stands for flat top grind. Blades that are designed specifically for ripping with the grain feature FTG teeth. While pretty much any saw blade will make a rip cut, a dedicated FTG rip blade will make it faster and cleaner. ATB stands for alternate top bevel. These teeth feature angled tops, which form a point on one side or the other. On a saw blade, they're positioned so that one tooth has a point on the left and the next one on the right and so on, alternating around the blade. These pointed teeth work like knives to sever wood fibers across the grain. Again, while pretty much any blade will make a crosscut, ATB teeth will make it much cleaner. ATBR stands for Alternate Top Bevel Plus Raker. An ATBR blade is the same as an ATB blade, except every fifth tooth is ground flat on the top. So really it's a combination of the two previous blades, which is why they call ATBR blades combination blades. We'll get more into that shortly. TCG stands for Triple Chip Grind. On a TCG blade, all the teeth are ground flat across the top, but every other tooth has the corners knocked off. The idea is that the cornerless tooth will rough out most of the waste while the full square tooth comes in behind and cleans up the corners. These blades are usually used for really dense materials like melamine and plastics or brass and aluminum. In a perfect world, you would use an FTG blade for all your rep cuts and an ATB blade for all your cross cuts. But since nobody is going to swap blades back and forth all the time, manufacturers long ago began marketing general purpose blades. These feature ATB teeth, just like a dedicated cross cut blade. But while a cross cut blade may have 60 or 80 ATB teeth, a general purpose blade usually has about 40. This produces an inexpensive and effective cross cut blade but also does a decent job at rip cuts. Like a general purpose blade, a combination blade is made to cut both with and across the grain, but instead of featuring 40 ATB teeth, a combination blade adds 10 flat teeth. This is that ATBR tooth arrangement we spoke about earlier. When combo blades first hit the market, some woodworkers complained that even though they made nice cuts, those extra 10 teeth made it cut slower than their 40 tooth general purpose blades. So some manufacturers enlarge the gullets between every set of five teeth to better clear the dust and theoretically speed up the cut. But by enlarging those gullets, they made the other gullets smaller. So the effect was negligible and many combination blade makers space their teeth evenly around the blade now. In the last couple of decades, the lines between combination and general purpose blades have blurred. Some manufacturers use the labels interchangeably, and it also is common to see a blade marked general purpose even with 60 or more teeth on it. So let's address tooth count. 10 inch saw blades can have as few as 10 teeth or as many as 100, but most fall between 24 and 80. Generally speaking, the more tooth you have on the blade, the cleaner it will cut while the fewer teeth you have, the more efficiently it will cut. Everybody wants clean cuts, but all those teeth leave little room for the gullets between them, and it's those gullets that carry away the sawdust as the blade spins. If your blade doesn't remove the dust efficiently, it'll cut slower and hotter, which can even lead to scorching of the wood. So you have to find the right balance between efficiency and quality. It's easier to make a clean rip cut than it is to make a clean cross cut because with a cross cut you're working across the grain. So you can afford to go with fewer teeth and larger gullets in a rip cut and just get the job done a little bit faster. And because the blade in the, is in the kerf longer in a rip cut than it is in a cross cut, efficient dust removal is more of an issue as well. So dedicated rip blades 
have fewer teeth and wider gullets than dedicated crosscut blades. For fast, rough rips and thick hardwoods, a 24 to 30 tooth FTG blade is your best bet. For cleaner, finished quality rip cuts, you might jump up to 40 or 50 teeth, such as you'd find on a combination or general purpose blade. Cross cuts get more complicated because you have to worry about across the grain splintering much more than speed and efficient dust removal. A 40 or 50 tooth combination blade will do a decent job at cross cutting, but delicate cross cuts in veneered plywood and other tear out pro material will come out far better with a 60 or 80 tooth ATB blade. The hook is the angle at which a tooth makes contact with the wood. This is also sometimes called a rake. A forward slanting tooth has a positive hook angle and will make a more aggressive cut. A backward slanting tooth has a negative hook angle and it will make a less aggressive cut. Negative hook angles are ideal for radial arm saws and sliding compound miter saws because they'll reduce the blade's tendency to grab and even climb up on top of the wood during the cut. Table saw blades typically have a positive hook on them. An aggressive 24 tooth rip blade may have a full 20 degree hook. A less aggressive combination blade might be set to 10 or 15 degrees. And an 80 tooth plywood blade may have a hook angle between just two and five degrees. Just as with tooth counts, hook angles are always a compromise between a faster, more aggressive cut and a slower, cleaner one. Now that you know what teeth are best for certain cuts, does that mean you have to go out and buy half a dozen different blades? No. Most woodworkers I know work with the same materials most of the time, so buy a blade that's suited to what you do the most. That may be a general purpose or combination blade. You'll use that for 90% of your cuts. If you work with a lot of plywood, add a good 80 tooth ATB blade. If you rip a lot of thick hardwoods, consider adding a 24 or 40 tooth FTG blade. This video was sponsored by SawBlade.com. They've supported us for quite some time, and I hope you'll return the favor by visiting their site to see their full line of blades for all sorts of uses. Their bandsaw blades in particular are excellent. And by supporting them, you support all the free woodworking content that we produce, so thanks for that. For more great tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker, check out Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. You can read and subscribe for free at StumpyNubs.com.